Uh, Laurie Laird, how are you? Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Good are you see. here or there? Where are you? <laughs> I'm in West London. Not very exotic at all. No, not really. Not really like West Hollywood. Yeah, I'm maybe. really sorry to disappoint you. you. Did you run out of English? Uh, American accent. No, 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 no. Yeah, listen, come down delighted to, to have you on. I listen, the, the, to be honest with you, the signal to West Hollywood's it better than it is to West London. Laurie, um, <laughs> I've had so many people on telling us that this is... Uh, the dawn of a new era, to quote Tony Blair. What did you make of it? What do you? you, you I, I don't know whether you're a Trump fan or a Democrat fan, but I'm just interested as to what you make of what has been a pretty monumental day in the United States of America. Yeah, it's been a huge day. I think that um, I'm watching coverage. I have it on every television here. I was in your studios last night, um, and I'm looking at all of the U.S. networks, sort of tear apart why did trump win why did he win it was it the hispanics was it the women was it the college educated women and the granularity of some of these statistics and i like statistics starting to make my head explode and i hate to oversimplify this and i might be a bit tired donald trump won because more people voted for him right we don't Who have knew? to over analyze this there yeah. was no ulterior motive not only did more people vote for him um but it wasn't close it wasn't a landslide by any means but this was a comfortable victory and i heard you speaking to kinsey about this any risk of the democrats uh contesting this any risk of political unrest i think unlikely because this wasn't a close vote it was mm -hmm. not it, it, it wasn't a landslide again but this was a definitive victory and the thing is donald trump told people what they wanted to hear more people wanted to vote for him and i think it turned on the economy right we saw a lot of exit polls asking people about their issues one thing that struck me is reproductive rights which is where kamala harris i thought was at her best that was really do low down the list on people's concerns when they went to vote the economy was top so that really did point to trump from a very early point last evening but isn't it interesting as well laurie that, that nobody seemed to have and i was frustrated i think because i expected her to be challenged more on this i didn't understand why the trump campaign didn't think it'd be worth saying hold on a second love the reason that you want to vote for us is because patently the economy is not where it was but you've been part of that and not only did she not defend that and it just, there was nothing in its place i keep using the phrase empty vessel but i really feel like that this woman was sort of pitched in there was this uh, one of the things we talk about over here is that the mainstream media i mean if you'd read the newspapers and the main news channels this was going to be kamala harris as the next president but if you went online it was a very different story right I never saw that. Look, she had, I'll agree with you, she had very favorable coverage. She really yeah. was impressed by any of the media. And even with that, she couldn't maintain any momentum. And I, yeah. I went back and forth, Jeremy, because I thought she was policy light. Again, I mentioned reproductive rights. She spoke well on that. But the economy, which is where people tell pollsters, tell them that's where they're really concerned, she was weak there. And when she did articulate policy, it was nonsensical. Although, if you give me a minute later, I think Donald Trump's policy is pretty nonsensical as well, um, although he's brave enough to articulate it. Um, and then I wonder, Hillary Clinton, she was great at policy, right? Do you remember Elizabeth Warren, who tried to run for the Democratic nomination a couple of times? Her tagline was, I've got a plan for that. I mean, people would go to her and say, I can't find a boyfriend. And she would say, I have a plan for that. She became famous for that line. <laughs> Neither of those women ever got near the Oval Office. So maybe policy is not what Americans want. But it may be that um, nobody no matter who the Democrats chose, and I agree with you, she probably wasn't the strongest candidate, no. and there is some talent on the Democratic bench, but it might be that nobody was going to beat a candidate associated with a period of time in which inflation mm -hmm. was close to 10% in America. Now, having said that, you can't blame this inflation on Trump and Harris. You just can't. It really wasn't their fault. There were things they did on the edge, and probably not Harris, right? She was, she was a kind of an absent VP, right? Yeah. We should have heard about her throughout. It was funny that she, she was VP for almost four years, and everyone said we don't really know what she's about. You know, that's a, it's a real kind of. Paradox. It looked to me yeah. like it looked to me like it was. It, it, she wasn't uh, visual for the four years. It looked to me like it was a coup. And and just to finish briefly and say to you, I I, I kept saying, you know nobody's asking her about being behind i would say the biggest political cover-up in american history which was to 
conned the American <laughs> people for 18 months that this bloke, Joe Biden, was cognitively, and I feel sorry for him, by the way, cognitively up to the job and then shove him aside when it suits you and pretend that you don't really want anything to do with his government. But hold on a minute. Actually, the truth is uh, I've got some new ideas, but I'm not sure if I... Very, very weird. Very, very strange to me. <laughs> Jeremy, I share your anger on that, and, and, and it's exacerbated by the fact that the Democrats really criticized Donald Trump's hold on the Republican Party, and I think that is concerning, watching, you know, watching various legislators kiss the ring. But Trump and his inner circle had it equally um, less visible but a hold on the Democratic Party. And it was, do you remember when George Clooney had that massive fundraiser in California for Joe Biden? And then after that, that disastrous debate on the 27th of June, wrote an editorial in the New York Times saying, come on, Joe, step down. We all knew something was wrong. And you think, wait, you knew something was wrong, but you didn't think we had to know about it? Yeah, yeah, that really. isn't on. You know, Kamala Harris should have been groomed from the moment that Joe Biden was inaugurated. It's really interesting. Laurie, listen, thank you. So just one final question. Do you go to bed tonight convinced that America's in a better place or do you go to bed tonight fed up that Donald Trump is back? Uh, let's talk next week, shall we, about Tariff Man, because I do have some real concerns about that economic policy. So give me a call next week. Absolutely on it. Laurie Laird, thank you very much indeed. U.S. political commentator.